Hello there, and welcome to this video. My name is Matt Petrowski. I'm here to teach you more about FileMaker. We've been going through a quite exhaustive series here, and today we're gonna to be setting up some multi-user attributes or aspects of our database that we're working on. Stick with me and we'll be on my desktop in just a few. All right, for today's lesson, what we're going to be doing is advancing our file that we're working on here in FileMaker. If you've just happened to find this video based on a YouTube search or something, it's very easy to uh, get plugged into the series. You can see that this one is titled 27, and just click on the channel icon. When you click on the channel icon, you'll be taken to where you can see a list of playlists. We're in the data and structure series. There's a couple others that I've shot here on YouTube, environment and fields and calculations, just basically getting used to FileMaker. We're into some more immediate content now. I'm using a copy of FileMaker 16. There are some features in the file that I have set and provided for you in the description below. You'll find a link if you'd like to follow along with this video has been set to, I believe, FileMaker 14. And that's just because FileMaker 14 introduced button bars and a couple of really nice features. Although a lot of what you learn in these videos from a structural standpoint will work in older versions. That's 13 and even 12. So let's take a look at the file that I have here. Again, if you'd like to follow along, you can get a copy of the file in the description, and I'm going to just show it here. There are a couple of reference databases that I have been using. In fact, we'll take a little bit of time to look at it today. It's FileMakers. I'll open up the time track and also the time billing, and then my ultimate uh, reference database, the file that I had started creating this time tracker database, which was the basis for this video series or these, this particular content. So this file right here, this time billing file, this is provided by FileMaker. And most of FileMaker's uh, template files that they provide, when we take a quick trip over to the manage and security area, we will see that there's really only one password that's provided in the file. And that by default is admin and then a blank password. So FileMaker really doesn't do anything in any of their template files to instruct or teach users how to start to plan for a multi-user database. And that's why we're using FileMaker. So we're going to need to add that into our solution. So we only have just the base full access account in FileMaker's file. And in our own file, as I hide this database, we have created an additional user. So we go back over to the file, manage, and take a look at our security. And we have created a privilege set and a user. Now I'm going to refer you to a previous video where I talked about security, probably in the environment section, um, a different series where you learn about just the basics. But the basics alone won't move your database forward and that's what we need to do in our solution right now. In particular, the situation that we're hitting, and by the way, when you go into this file and you see that we have a user with, oh, well, I'm on a privilege set right now. First of all, let's clarify for uh, review. A privilege set, you can think of it in the same way that you think of a role. A given user has a certain role, and you can move users between different roles, but you have to give them different accounts in FileMaker. In other words, a given account in FileMaker can only have one given role. It can't have multiple roles and share the privileges across those multiple roles. So that's one of the downsides with regards to FileMaker security. Uh, it's an all or nothing. A given account has a given privilege set. That privilege set is set to do a certain number of things and that's it. In order to allow the user to do other things, you have to program it, program that capability into either the role itself, I know this sounds confusing, or give the user another account. So. We have the test account and we have the admin account. So the first thing that we need to do when we're going to set up our database for multi-user use is we have to make it such that, and we're going to allow that blank password, which you wouldn't do if I was hosting this, we need to make it so that it's easy for us as the developers to get in and out of the system using these different roles. If all we have is a FileMaker system using the main admin full access account, well, of course we can do everything. So we're going to open up the script workspace. I did that with command shift L. 
or Command Shift S, excuse me. We've got a little bit of organization in here, and we are going to make a script that is quite simply re-login. So we're going to type in re, if I can type the capital R, login, and we are going to add the step. I hit the return key, and we just start to type re-login, and that's it. All that we want is that one script step. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move this up to the very top. I'm going to uh, click this little item right here that will show all of the scripts that are listed in the uh, within the scripts. In fact, if we take a look, we switch over to our file right here and we go to scripts, we can see that all of them are turned on. And this is one of the things I pointed out in the, the environment videos of FileMaker. As you create new scripts, if that area is hidden right there, that little uh, show me what's added to menus, every time that you create a new script, FileMaker by default adds it to the, to the menus. We really don't want that to happen. So the easiest way to get rid of this, well, what I'm going to do is the quick tip that I've showed you before, I just did a Command A to select all or a Control A. I'm now going to use the Option key with the arrow uh, button to go to shrink up all folders. I'm now going to use it to go the opposite direction to expand all folders so that it reveals to me all scripts. Now I can do another command or control A to select everything and in one fell swoop, uncheck all of them so that nothing shows in the script menu. Because really the only thing that I want in there now as I hold down the command key first to select a target item or deselect, which I what that's what I just did, then select it. This is the only script that I want to show in the menu while I'm developing my FileMaker solution. So it is the re-login. So this is what's going to allow us to test our multi-user setup as we're working on the file and putting in features from the thought process of how are we going to make this database work for multi-user. Currently, our database, as it's constructed, is really only for a single user. Um, any given user can come in, and by that, let's hide the time tracker back here. By single user, what I mean by that is when we take a look at our graph, and if you've been watching all of these videos in series, you know that we've put, been putting in features that really don't limit what can be seen based on a user by user basis. We did create the users table. So in our manage database with command shift D, over in the relationships, we very much created a users table right there. And that users table, when you look at the logging activity video just a number of videos ago, what happens is when a new user comes in, you've created a FileMaker account, or you're using Active Directory, external authentication, or um, uh, I forget what the Mac calls their version of the directory. What happens is this is our uh, context when the file is initially open. We set that on our file options. We hit this particular table occurrence or a layout based on this table occurrence. And the very first thing that we do is check for whether or not this user account is in our database system because that's what's going to allow us to manage multiple users. We have to get FileMaker's list of users or the external list of users and put them into our own table so that we can manage preferences and manage privileges, what they can and can't do, and also log their activities, which we did with the activity logging. So we need to be able to test this, and that's what we did with that script. In that script, we made it, which it should be the only item listed now, we've made it so that we can flip in and out of those two accounts. Now here's how it's going to work. We are going to develop against a test user not necessarily one of our real users in the file. And then when we're ready to deploy, we're going to deactivate that user. So here's what this looks like. We go back over to our manage security. While we are developing, we are developing and we're going to be switching between the full access account while we're developing and putting in features and the lower level of access with the privilege set of user in this case. And of course, as I just mentioned, as soon as we deploy, we remember that we want to deactivate our test user. Now, in this database, what I'm doing is I am showing you a database that's using a no password uh, account. In fact, the full access and the test access has no password. That is only for the purpose of this video. If you ever do that, I will come after you and I will find you and I will, I don't know what I will do. Um, not that violent, but uh, you always 
have passwords on all accounts on every FileMaker file that you host up. Even if you're doing this testing process and you say to yourself, I'm going to just uncheck this when I deploy, no, use a password between the two. Now for us here, development, while we're learning, it makes it really easy for us to switch. So let's put in admin here, no password, and we'll say okay. So here's how e easy it is to switch between the accounts. In fact, we want to know when we are in a user account versus when we're in a, a lower level account versus our admin account. So we're going to go into layout mode. We are going to, uh, in the header area here, we're going to go to the insert menu and we're going to put in a um, other symbol right here. This other symbol allows us to access all of FileMaker's environment get functions. Again, I'll refer you to a great video I did about the environment and uh, being able to see all of these at one time. Um, account name is what we want up there up at the top. We're going to put that right into the top so that we can see what account we are logged into. Now remember, I believe in this file, let me check the custom function, see if I did happen to add the custom function that I add to all files. Oh, I did not. We'll have to add the developer custom function. Um, we, If we don't want this particular piece of information, which most of the time you do want to put this somewhere on the layout, usually, uh, historically, it's in the footer of you know, what's the login account that's logged in? What's the uh, current timestamp or the creation timestamp and the modification timestamp of the current record? And whether you use a merge field, which is what this is right here, as opposed to an actual field, really depends on whether you want the, to allow users to search based on that information. If I wanted users to be able to search based on which accounts had created which records, I would use a field instead of this merge variable. So there's a clear distinction there. We're gonna get into all kinds of those details when we take a look at the uh, designing the user interface that we have here. But now that we have this mul the, the multiple accounts in, we have the script, we can simply just do a command one to flip between the accounts. So it's really easy. So here I can type in test and just sign in. And now I can see quite clearly that I am logged in as test. And of course, I wouldn't be able to get into the scripts. I'm trying to do that right now with command shift S and it won't even come up for me. So it's always nice to know. And of course, because the scripts number them one through zero, it's really nice while you're developing to make these scripts available to you so that all I have to do anytime I'm testing is just hit a quick command one, type in admin and accept that and I'm right into my account. So I'm flipping back and forth as I'm testing these different accounts. So what's our objective? Our objective now with the multi-user setup is we, we start to ask ourselves questions. So the same thing I've been teaching you throughout this whole course, it always comes down to what questions do you ask of your database? So the question, the first question that I have is, is the test user or any other user going to be working on the same projects that any other user is? And if the answer comes back, which in this case it does, no. Um, the test user may be working on project four and six, but I may be working on project 11 and seven. Well, I've put my core functionality into this system. I've got it working for a single user, and that's a great way to approach your database when you start to develop it. But now I need to extend that functionality so that projects only show respective of given users, of whatever users, the whatever projects those users are working on. This needs to be a true multi-user database. Likewise, I need to make it so that any given user cannot modify any other user's time. FileMaker has this very convenient uh, function. In fact, if we switch here, I'm gonna do a command one, type in test, except I am now logged in as test. I don't even know if uh, test user can create a record, but let's see if they can. They can indeed. I did one down at the very bottom right there. Let's back that out by an hour on our creation timestamp, and then let's close that. But here's the downside. Currently, all users, or uh, as the privilege set is probably set on the security for this file, I can go to this file right here, which this was created by um, the admin account. In fact, let's switch back and put that on the account, on the record itself, so we can see what's happening. Let's go back into admin. I did that again with command one, super easy. I go into layout mode, 
And here on the, um, I've gone into layout mode. All these, I have the creation timestamp and I want to be able, and that's a related creation timestamp. We've got a lot of good cleanup to do on this file. Anybody who's coming and look at the, watching these videos is probably saying, oh my gosh, does this dude even know how to do any type of uh, modification? <laughs> Quit talking while I'm trying to do this. Does he even know how to do any design? I do. We'll be making this database look like awesome. All right, so we put our account name on there. Is it even showing there? Description, there it is right there. I need to make this more distinct. Let's make it uglier than even possible. I'm going to switch the... Uh, color of this font color let's make it nice big red there we go so we can pick it out all right so here is our problem um, all the way down here at the bottom we've got test he can create accounts but he can clearly go into admins records and he can change them not cool we don't want uh, that to be able to be done so our first step now is to uh, make it so that only users can modify their own records. And that's a very easy uh, step. In fact, I've showed that, or I've shown that um, before, but we'll do it again here. We will zoom in here and go to manage, go to our security. And this is where we start to change up our privilege set. So in our user privilege set, when I initially just threw this together, I wasn't thinking in depth about what a user needs to be able to modify. We can see that when we double click on the user privilege set that I've gone with some very general broad settings in terms of the security. Um, all layouts, they can view them. All value lists, they can view them. All scripts are all executable. Um, I do allow access through the FileMaker network. Um, all of these extended privileges control what this particular privilege set can do. But most importantly, right here, we've got custom privileges currently set. Now we can see that um, it looks like when I created this privilege set is when I we were creating the users table. And we did the same thing in the users table that we want to do now in the timetable. I can see that right there that we have limited who can actually edit a given record. So the biggest difficulty with FileMaker and its security settings is if you go too crazy and you go too narrow, you create, you end up creating more problems for yourself when you're developing than if you try to strike a balance between really broad privileges and um, really tight, narrow privileges. Now, the rule in security in most systems is that you give users the least amount of privileges necessary for that particular role to accomplish what they want to accomplish. So you start from nothing and then escalate and give privileges as they, uh, as you want them to have those additional privileges. In FileMaker, unfortunately, that's a little bit more difficult. In FileMaker, a lot of FileMaker developers just start to develop the system. They develop it with um, full access. They put in features and functionality, and then sometimes security is an afterthought, which can be a little bit of a hassle because then you really have to go and think about things. So there's two approaches you can take. You can take the, I'm going to limit all privileges and then escalate them as I develop, or I'm going to develop the whole thing and then apply my security. My intention with this video is to show you that doing the former, doing uh, the one where you limit what the user can do from the outset is a little bit better of an approach when you're developing a, a complex system because you inevitably will have security bugs if you don't do it that approach, if you put it on after the fact. So it's basically going through and looking at all of your tables. We know that on time, we're now going to control this. We get to ask, do we want users to be able to see their own records? Yes. Do we want them to be able to see other records? No. So we are going to set this to limited. And of course, we have FileMaker's calculation dialog box, which gives us full control to define whatever degree of security that we want based on fields, based on um, privilege sets, you name it. The most simple thing is... And down at the bottom, we can always see that this says calculation result must be Boolean. So the way that we always read this in FileMaker, when we're looking at a FileMaker calculation dialog box, we say, in the context where I am, I am in the privileges. Within the privileges, 
with regards to the timetable with its specific records, I want to allow users to only view those records if the get account name is equal to whoever created that, the creation account name. And messed up my equals there. But this may expand now from a multi-user standpoint because remember FileMaker security only controls what the user can and can't do in the realm of what FileMaker knows. And FileMaker knows about layouts, table occurrences, tables, fields, but FileMaker knows nothing about the structure of your database and your system. So you can't expect it to know. So somewhere down the road, let's say I have a situation where I want to allow a manager to be able to do this. Well, I don't have the field right now, but over in the users table, which I currently don't even have uh, connected based on my current context, I would need to wire it up and we'll probably do this. I would eventually end up expanding this privilege set so that it would say more. So a user can modify or view their own record if they are the creator of that record or I might have a field that is something like is manager and it would be like uh, this um, users I'm just making this up name uh, I forget uh, let's just go with my naming right here uh, layout users something like this like that layout is manager. So what would happen is I have now two pieces of criteria that say who can view this record. Of course, I don't have this structure into my database yet. We'll be putting that in over the next couple of videos. Maybe we'll be making managers so that somebody that is designated in my system can see something. But for right now, we'll just say this is who can view it. Now I'm going to select all of this, copy it, because I want to put the same thing on my edit. Now this is the difficulty of FileMaker coding. I've basically just duplicated one chunk of code and I put it into two places. So now if I think about this, if I'm going to go back in and change the view so that managers can view it, but managers can also edit timestamps by, for some reason, you get to control. I, tr I always try to think about at this point in time, is there a way that I could make this a little bit uh, more dry is the word that we use. Is there a single place? I tend to think of custom functions when I go f towards dry, but of, co of, K uh, of course, in this situation, the problem is this account name is relative based on when this calculation is going to be evaluated. And we saw this in a former video. This evaluation right here is evaluating based on the context of layout time. And here again, everything in FileMaker is based on context. So this calculation of saying, is the account name equal to the creation account name? It will work within this context or this context, this, this, or this. But it will not work within context when we add in that manager feature because the context, when we look at our managed database, will be such that this is where the users are using the data, so this context wouldn't work, or this context might not work. It's this context when we connect the users table to this in order to look at the users table to see which users have been designated as managers. And so it's very important when you're dealing with security or anything else that you remember this whole notion of context. Context being what, when I'm creating this calculation, can see can be seen by this table occurrence. What is it connected to and how does it see that information? The how of what it sees is through the relationship itself. So let's go ahead and go with that for right now. Everybody should be allowed to create and the delete we can make this one limited as well, but in this uh, situation, we're going to say, uh, at this point in time, we're not going to add the delete because maybe the only time that we would say somebody can delete a time record is if it was users is manager, like that. Uh, we wouldn't want users to delete their own time cards because then they're gonna try to play little tricky games and what have you. 
So the last thing that we'll look at, look at here with regards to multi-user setup, and then the next video that we'll be looking at is uh, playing with the relationships and filtering it down so that a given user only sees projects specific to what they've been assigned to. We'll advance this multi-user, but first we have to get the access in place. So with this field access right here, the one thing that is difficult with field access whenever you're setting up your privileges. Now first, uh, I should have mentioned on multi-user setups. You can see right here that this any new table, this is a key critical thing about all of FileMaker's security model. Whenever you have this any new table, FileMaker is a very permissive application. It permits users to do a lot of things by default. So when we want to flip that on its head and say we are going to say that you are not going to allow things, you probably want to do this right here, no, no, and no, and none. If you do this on any new table, what happens is as you develop the database, this forces you because you've taken a restrictive mindset about your database, this forces you that if you develop in your full access mode and then switch into your other user, you have to go in and then explicitly elevate the permissions on a role by role basis. And that's the better approach that I was talking about right there. By default, you can see that if everything was set to yes, that means every new table and every field that you added would immediately be accessible to that particular role. And then the downside is you can't share some of these attributes across roles. As I stated, each account has each role. So the field access, this is a control that if we look at the time right here, and we go to this limited, none wouldn't work for us. Um, in fact, one of the things that I want you to recognize, I showed you this as a tip in a previous video, but just in case you uh, didn't, catch on it or haven't seen that video. FileMaker has this really cool little trick here in this uh, security. If I have this currently set to all and then I go to limited, notice that everything is defaulted to modifiable. If I want to say and do the opposite, if I want to say I want to just choose what is modifiable and everything else should not be, switch it to none first then switch it to limited. And notice that everything is set to no access. So you can approach it from either way. You can think about, are the bulk of the fields modifiable? And then I'm just going to say what I don't want the user to have access to, or do I want them to not have access any, any, to any field and then just choose which field I do want them to have access to. So in this case, the difficulty with FileMaker security is many times you come across a situation where you end up getting this really generic dialogue that says quite plainly, your security privileges do not allow you to perform this action. That's it. It doesn't tell you whether it ties into the fact of a menu being turned on or off or whether a given field. If you're using the debugger within FileMaker Advance, and I suggest that you do, that's when you're going to be able to walk through scripts and turn on pause on error, which we're going to look at in the scripting session, and actually see where is the problem being caused, which particular field does or doesn't have access. Because going and doing this, where I select, I want these and I want them to be modifiable and choosing what I don't is, in the context of this live video, is really pretty difficult. I'm not going to be able to do that right now. So I'm just going to select all, make them all modifiable. Again, bulk actions help you do things really quickly. And I'm just going to currently leave this one to all. But if there was a specific field that I didn't want a user to access in this particular privilege set, I tend to go in and just say, I just don't want them to access this field, this field, and this field. Um, but again, taking the other approach as you develop is a really good way to go about it. So I think currently we have our setup, at least with regards to just the timetable. I'm probably offline when I'm not recording this video for you. I will probably go through and set up the rest of my privilege sets. And the way that I typically do this is I, um, set myself aside from the computer and I think about all of the different roles. I write those roles across the top of a pad of paper 
Within those roles, I write down what do they need to be able to do. And then I have to match those up to the tables in terms of what they should and shouldn't be able to do. Now remember, on our security settings with a table such as, for example, users. With users and certain tables, you always have the ability to make a script have full access privileges, meaning it the script itself operates as if it's a developer running that script. You don't want to treat that super casually and just, you know, arbitrarily set all scripts to be able to do that because then the scripts themselves could do things that you don't anticipate. But when it comes to certain tables like our users table and our log table, we want to make sure that we lock those down so that people cannot modify logs and they cannot modify users. Anything that does control our security within our own FileMaker system, we want to be really conscious about those. But then the rest of them, we're just going to go through and pretty much you know, give access. Typically with a globals table where it's nothing but just global fields, you can always have a yes, uh, yes, or a yes, uh, all field access, all view yes, and all edit yes. But create, we will not want anybody to create a new globals uh, record because in the globals table, we really only want one and they should not be able to delete as well. And the projects will decide who's going to be able to uh, create projects. Is that managers uh, only or is it uh, can users create their own projects? That really boils down to the database and how we're going to use it. So that is our start of multi-user. Um, in order to put in multi-user functionality even further, and remember everything we just did was just one particular privilege set. This is the hassle of FileMaker's privileges and not being able to copy or share them um, across privilege sets because if I want another privilege set that just has slightly different uh, tweaks, I can, I believe, duplicate this privilege set, which is a really nice thing, and then go apply those tweaks. But if there's subtle tweaks within FileMaker's calculation dialog box, I have to go in and actually copy those or uh, modify them and copy them to the different sets. So it's a little bit... Uh, convoluted, but it is what we have in terms of FileMaker's security and our multi-user setup. So the next video we will be getting into is going to be setting up, now that we've got this uh, start for ourselves and we're able to use our command one and log into the test account quickly, um, we can see that we do not have access. We only have access to our own records, which is a good thing. We can address this feature right here. This to me is a really ugly thing. If you've not been confronted by this as a new FileMaker learner, FileMaker by default shows all records. And even worse than that is if we didn't have access to this layout, this layout would be completely gray with a little piece of text that says no access. Well, there are ways that you can solve this. You're going to have to use script triggers, or we're going to be using script triggers, so that what happens is we don't get in and we don't see this ugliness right here when we come into the layout. When we come into this layout, we want it to be clean and set up for the user who is logged into the system. We want it to be a nice multi-user system the way that FileMaker can be. So let's see if we have any questions for today's video that came in as a result of what we've recorded today. All right, not too much, which is pretty good. There we've got one question. How can I control the visibility of certain records in list table view? Table view, um, you cannot control, you can't necessarily control the visibility of the records if the records show. What you can do is you can try to control what records actually load. Uh, in other words, we're going to control what the user can sh can actually see. Um, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at that really quickly. That's a fun one. Good question. Um, let's switch there to that and let's go. So this is a very easy fix. In this particular case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into layout mode and I can't do that because I'm currently logged in as test. I'm going to switch to admin. So I'm now in as admin. I'm going to go into layout mode. In the previous two videos, we started taking a look at script triggers. And script triggers allow us to control the environment. Well, script triggers are also available on layouts when you get into a layout. So when I go up to the menu of the layouts and I go to the layout setup, 
there is an area right here for script triggers. Now, what happens is we have the on record load. Each time that a record is loaded, we have when a record is committed, reverted, keystrokes, enter, and so forth. But it is the on layout enter. There it is right there. This script trigger, the on layout enter, is the way that we can control visibility as the user navigates through the FileMaker solution. So when a user lands onto this initial layout, and it's part of our um, scripting process. In other words, our script is currently set up such that when we get into the file, it initially launches an on first window open. That on first window open script can perform the same thing that we would put here on an on layout enter, meaning we're just going to limit what the user can view. But here's the downside. If we use that initial startup script, or we tie a script to the on layout enter, meaning every time that the user comes into this layout, let's go ahead and just set it up right here. We'll create, uh, I'll call this filter view. And I'm just going to add a really quick step right here. I'm going to say uh, perform find, super simple, specify find requests. I'm going to edit this. I don't want this particular criteria. I will remove that. And I will say that the creation account name is equal to, um, I don't know if I can put in, um, I'm going to have to uh, put in, yeah, find records. I think I'm gonna need a, a, a variable before this. Let's put a variable up here at the top. Let's say variable uh, account. And then let's specify get account name. We say OK. We say OK. We're going to perform restore on our find. And we're going to edit that find. And we're going to say the creation of the account name is equal to account. We're going to add that. That should work. We say OK. We zoom out here. We say OK. I want to test this just to make sure that it works. And it uh, we didn't leave the layout. We need to switch to another layout. So let's switch to our startup. Then let's switch back to our application to our time layout and see if it works. There we go, four out of six. So it did work. So what happens is we've come into this layout and as soon as we drop into this layout, it fires the on layout enter script. That script is performing a find to go find all of the records that are created by this account. And that's so that we don't see all of the no access when we're logged in as the uh, test account. So the difficulty is, unless you're going to take full control, let's go to the startup. I'm going to re-log in as test the smaller account. So what I would expect now is I'm logged in as test. When I switch to the layout of time, it will load my records. There's my two records. We can see that it performed that, but in the FileMaker environment, nothing currently prevents the user from doing everything that FileMaker allows you to do. I could click right here and it will invert the found set. It will show me all of those no access records. So FileMaker has allowed me to completely bypass what I just attempted to solve, which is a little bit of a downside. And the only way that I could get rid of that is if I took full control of the environment and hid that bar and also took away the menus. Because as we can see in the records menu, I can simply go to a show all records and again, it's just going to show me. So I'm logged in with the lower level access right now. But FileMaker's only method for limiting things is to basically show this ugly text. So really the only way that you can get around that is if you take full control of the over the environment, that means changing out the menus and then also uh, setting up things so that you don't see parts of FileMaker where FileMaker normally is going to do those things. Now some users may not be able to find them. You can hide individual menus. Um, you can make it difficult for the users, but any knowledgeable FileMaker user is going to be able to just go in and see this really ugly view right here when it comes to the multi-user aspect. Now another alternative is, if you, if you are going to take full control, in this regards we're looking at a full native uh, FileMaker environment. We are looking at FileMaker's list view and we can't modify FileMaker, 
the way that FileMaker's list view works. But we can take control on a layout and make that layout display data how we want. So if we forced users to use a layout that was set to a form view and used portals in order to display records that are their own timestamp records, then that portal would never show any other records such as we're seeing right here with no access and so forth. So that's really the only way that I know of, unless I think of some other ways where we can control what records are visible and which ones are not. All right, so yes, I'm looking forward to the next one uh, as well. Here's another question that came in. Uh, Matt, do you check for questions on older videos? Yes, I do, and um, I'll have to check on specifically on 26. Sometimes it takes me a few days to get to them, but I do check for them and uh, try to um, answer them. We're at a level where we don't have that many people watching these live and putting the questions out. Uh, question, you, uh, you find can be a better, your find can be time consuming, uh, would it better to be a filter? Um, don't understand that entirely. The find can be time consuming. Finds are actually instantaneous on fields that are indexed. On fields that are not indexed, such as unstored fields, they will be, uh, yeah, they will be, uh, they can take a lot more time. And finds that go across multiple tables where an ad hoc join needs to be created in order to find the result set between two differing tables, especially on non-index fields, that can take extremely slow. But on any time that you know that a find is being performed on fields that are indexed, that find should be uh, just instant uh, in order to find things up. And we can always address things with unstored fields by trying to make them unstored so that uh, finds will go faster and uh, do things. And again, a filter in the notion of a relationship is probably going to be relatively the same as a find when you're working with indexed versus non-indexed fields. Um, so it just really comes down to that. Um, we can change a custom menu so that uh, he can't go to view all. Yes, you can make custom menus and you can replicate FileMaker's menu and then take individual menu items out that you don't want users to have access to, such as the replace all uh, uh, replace field contents and the show all records. You can definitely do that. We'll have to set up a video where we uh, take a look at changing the whole menu system or completely starting with your own new menu system. Um, and Jean-Pierre mentions maybe records by performing a restrictive find on timer. Um, yes, you can uh, perform a find on timer. Not exactly clear on the uh, question there. Maybe records performing a restrictive find on timer. There are so many things that we can do that are going to be um, fine. Um, maybe you'll miss. Yeah, you know, one really interesting thing, if you are a new FileMaker learner and you don't know this particular trick, let me show you really quickly. It's uh, absolutely a need to know for developers. We're at 42 here, so we're doing pretty good. Um, I'm going to switch to my startup and then switch to my... Um, time again so it loads my uh, smaller found set based on the trigger of the on layout enter. This right here is a very, very handy feature to have. In fact, let me uh, switch between my ad to, to my admin account. When you click this, it inverts the found set. So whatever is not showing, it will then show. And if you want to, as you're developing, since I'm logged in here as the admin, if you ever want to filter data out in FileMaker, I forget when they added this, it may have been 13 or 14, any field that you do have access to, the quickest and easiest way to access that data is to simply right click in the field, I'll need to be zoomed out here and zoom in right here, and choose this option, find matching records. On top of that, we're going to be going through this in the find uh, part, portion of the video, but I'll give you the tip right now because I know that not everybody remembers everything from every video. So if I wanted to find all of test, I can just select that and it found all of test. If I, uh, as a developer, I do a command or control J to show all records. If I want to now limit and just see admins records, I'm just going to right click here and choose find matching records. It will find the four out of the six that are here. If I want to further extend this, you can select just a portion of a field and then narrow it down even further. So for example, I should be able to do this, 
highlight just 11-17-2017, and because that's the only portion that's selected, FileMaker should ignore this portion right here, and I should be able to right-click and then choose either Constrain or Extend Found Set. So if I constrain this found set, I will have found all of the records that were by admin that were created on 11-17-2017. So we'll be getting into this when we go about go through FileMaker's find mode. It's ultimately powerful, but the follow-on trick to that in order to see what you got as a request by choosing those options is to simply use Command or Control R. As soon as you do that, FileMaker will go into its refined mode and you will see what type of request FileMaker made. Now I can see that I've only got one. I don't know where the, uh, oh, the user... I don't know where it went, but um, I can see, oh, uh, the in, I constrained the found set. So it wasn't, a, it wasn't a new find that I created. Initially, I had made a find of admin, and then I found based on that portion that I had highlighted. But you can see that the find that FileMaker actually used converted the timestamp to any timestamp. Um, I was thinking there temporarily that I, I had created a new find that combined both pieces of criteria, where what I had done initially was find everything that was admin, then out of those results, constrain it to yet another search where I only took the date. So for those of you that stuck into this video for the full 46 minutes, you just got a great little tip if you've never dealt with that with FileMaker. It is a brilliant way of being able to find things sort of hidden, things that you find out about much later in your FileMaker career, but things that I'm giving you in these video series. All right, so that's going to give us a wrap on this particular video. So I'm switching to my subscribe. If you like this content, you can always find more over at FileMakerMagazine.com. And of course, here on YouTube, if you want to like to be notified, you can subscribe right here. And the next video in this series will show up right here. As always, I wish you much luck with your own database development. And until next time, happy FileMaking.